Hey, it's Nick Vary. Welcome back to session two of three. Last time we looked at how to get your sounds, the difference between the acoustics and electric guitars, a little bit about my journey. And now we're moving on to some practice routines and warm ups and the ethos behind all of that. We'll also start looking at a song today and then I'll talk about my process of learning a song, how to read tab, and then we'll explore in the next session how to articulate and maybe embellish that some more. Here's a couple of quick stretches that you can do just before you launch into your practice routines or the songs that you want to play. So you can start very simple, just bringing your arm nice and straight and then grabbing your fingers and very gently pulling back. You should feel that here and on the front. Then the other way. Remember, don't yank it, be, be gentle. Just pull back, you'll feel it on the top of the wrist, be gentle. I'll do the other side. Next, stretch the fingers out as wide as they can go. Reach forward and back. Grab them and pull back. Next, like a little claw, bring those fingers in as tight as you can. Pull it and then just shake off. Tight as you can. And then just shake off. So let's quickly talk about warm ups and practice routines. Sometimes I get asked, are there, are there exercises to help you get your fingers faster and stronger? And is it really necessary? And the answer is yes, it is absolutely necessary. If you want to take your playing to a more articulate and thorough place, you can get by with just playing around with chords and, and never doing any of these, but you may find your progress a lot slower. It's worth integrating 10 minutes of really focused practice, at least before you start launching into some of the songs that you want to play. Your practice routine is going to be key to your development. It's very important to find some form of a routine when you can. Now, I know this can sound a little bit regimented and one likes to think that music is just this free for all. But in truth, it's not. Of course, it's all fun. It's great playing your songs that you want to play, but there needs to be some semblance of a practice routine. Warm ups are also incredibly important. Like I said in the last video, making sure that your fingers are ready and stretched out and your picking hand. Is it going to be locked in? You want to make sure that they're really, really synced up before you jump into any occasion of playing. The analogy that I like to use is one of the sprinter. When you have a sprinter who's training for a race, they train every day and they train their body to get limber and stronger. They don't just get to the race on the night and run. It's gonna be impossible. They can't be at their best. So it's the same with any instrument. You want your fingers, your hands, and your mind to have clarity and be really nice and exact. So here we go. The guitar is unfortunately one of the most unforgiving instruments to learn in the early phases because it doesn't sound great right out of the box. It's all in the hands. It's all in the fingers. You have to work on curling the fingers, finger independence and strengthening the muscles of the hand all at one go. A phrase that I always like to say to my students is to enjoy the process and forget the progress. What I mean by that is just accept that it may take longer than you would have liked in the early stages. I don't mean this to put you off, but it can take longer than one week to be able to shred on the guitar or play your favorite songs. So just enjoy the fact that you're just picking up the guitar and playing and learning a new skill. That's gonna take you ultimately much further than getting frustrated at yourself if you're not doing everything in a couple of weeks. Any instrument, is a true dedication. So try to start to appreciate the small wins and you'll see progress. Ultimately, however long you want to spend on your own routine is up to you. 
But what I would say is be realistic. Everyone's got their own life to attend to and we're all doing different things. And this is a brand new skill. Don't kick yourself if you don't have five hours a day to practice. But a really good place to start is to spend 10 to 15 minutes every day just to start on just doing technique practice and routines. This will get your fingers moving quicker and much more independent. So when it comes to playing the songs, then you'll be much more prepared. I wanna make you guys aware of hand posture. Now, when you're holding the neck from a classical point of view, you want the thumb behind the neck and flat, okay? This helps for you to fan the fingers out. Now, further down the line, if you start to get into more styles like blues and rock, a lot of players will put the thumb over the top. You can find yourself naturally doing that if you have larger hands and you're playing some chords, you may find that your thumb naturally hangs over the top. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Just make sure that the fingers are nice and curled over the strings. But for these technique exercises, we're going to want the thumb low. This helps the fingers to do all the work. So you're not bringing in extra movements that will detract from the fingers. On the other side, I'm gonna hold the pick with my index finger curled in and my thumb flat over the pick. Just a little bit sticking out. Then I'm gonna rest my hand on the top of the bridge. This is called anchoring. And you can just practice at first, pushing down on one fret, it doesn't matter where, and it doesn't matter which string. Relax, don't push tight. It's literally just sitting there and just resting. And then just go down and up. Should be nice and relaxed in the wrist. It's really important to start to get the musical letters, the musical notes of the strings into your memory. Starting on this low, thick string is an E. The next string is A. The next string, D. The next string, G. The next string, B. And then another high E. E, A, D, G, B, E. And I read somewhere, which will never leave me Elephants and donkeys grow big ears. Moving on to our first technique exercise. And this exercise is called a chromatic scale. Don't be afraid of that word chromatic. It just means one fret to the next, okay? We're gonna start with the thumb flat and around the middle of the neck. Remember, we want to fan the fingers and just let the fingers do all the work. And this hand, we're gonna anchor we're gonna push down with our index finger on the fifth fret of the low E string, and that's the note of A. And it's gonna do a down pick. Then, on the sixth fret, or the B flat, up pick. B, the, the seventh fret with the ring finger, down pick. And then, the pinky, eighth fret, up pick. So we're going down, up, down, up. This is called alternate picking. Down, up, down, up. Then we're going to move through the strings. Okay. When we're on the high E string on the eighth fret, I want you to move the fingers up one fret and we're going to start to descend come down with the pinky this is slightly more tricky metronome is going to be incredibly important for your technique moving forward. It may bring back 
memories of terrifying music teachers, but it's in effect a mini drummer. So I've loaded up a metronome in Google. You can get them as an app on your phone. If you go to any app store um, and search for metronome, there'll be plenty. You don't need anything really flash. I'd recommend just getting a free one for now. Ultimately, you're just going to be setting the BPM, the beats per minute, and then pressing play for now. Okay, so here we go. I've loaded up a metronome at 60 BPM. That's one note a second. And this is always a really great, relaxed way to start your exercise. <laughs> that example, I was playing at quarter notes, meaning one note per click. Now that might have felt really slow, but it's enough time to think ahead, keep the hands relaxed and focus on just playing with the metronome. If you feel ready to double the speed, you can play at eighth notes, meaning two notes per click. <laughs> get that down you could go the next step which is playing 16th notes which is four notes per click <laughs> chromatic exercise, I want to stress a couple of things. It's important not to feel like you have to go fast. It's not about speed. It's about accuracy and it's about good synchronization between the hands. But just get the fingers in the right place and get the picking synced up. Once that feels good, go at a steady pace. You could always increase the BPM before you do double the speed at eighth notes. Also, Watch out for that thumb. It can have a tendency of creeping up during these exercises. Watch out that the shoulder and the elbow don't lock. Keep them relaxed, keep that thumb low, and keep the fingers nice and fanned out. This next exercise is a bit of a tricky one, and it's called diagonal lines. The point of this exercise is to increase the finger accuracy moving through the strings, and also the picking moving through the strings. We start on the D string on the first fret, we give it a down pick. We move to the G string on the second fret with an up pick. We move to the B string on the third fret on a down pick. And then the E string on the fourth fret with a pinky. Then we go down to the first fret of the E string, down pick. Second fret of the B string, up pick. Third fret of the G string, down pick. Fourth fret of the D string with an up pick. Then what you want to start to do is repeat that sequence, but now starting a fret higher on the second fret of the B string. third fret fourth fret fifth fret fifth 
bit of a tongue twister. Sixth fret. The same again with a metronome. Here it is at 60 BPM. And eighth notes. And sixteenth notes. Four notes per click. You may be sometimes quite surprised how hard it is to go slow and sometimes I feel like we're not used to just pulling things in and really letting things flatten out. So I must reiterate, it's very important to start off slow. Now something to note about these technical exercises are that they're not exactly the most melodically or harmonically pleasing things to hear. Here's something a little bit more musical and pleasing to the ear. And it's the pentatonic scale, which is a very common scale used, particularly on the guitar. We're gonna be playing it in a, we start with the 5th fret, we stretch our pinky out to the 8th fret, I'm doing an up pick, then we go to the next string, 5th fret, which is D, the 7th fret, E, next string, 5th fret, G, 7th, A, 5th fret, C, 7th, D, 5th fret, E, 8th fret, G, 5th fret A, 8th fret C. So here's the A minor pentatonic pattern. This pentatonic shape isn't just exclusive to A. You can move it to different frets, starting on different notes. In this case, the 3rd fret, which is a G. I could play the same pattern. Be called G minor pentatonic. I can move it to C, which is the eighth fret on the low E string. And this would be called C minor pentatonic. So move it around, experiment, don't get stuck in one place. Here's the A minor pentatonic played with a few different rhythms. Eighth notes. One and two and three. Triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a This is a little bit of a tongue twister, so take your time. It's in groups of three, and we're going to start on the eighth fret of the high E string. Now, rather than going to the note on the same string, we're going to skip that. I'm going to go to the next note of the scale, which was the eighth fret of the next string. So. Then we go back to the note that we skipped. So it sounds like this. Now, once we're here, rather than going to this note here, we're gonna again skip this note and go to the fifth fret of the B string, then to the note we skipped. Those two together sound like this. If I continue down this pattern, I get something like this. But ascending as well, starting on the low string, skipping a note, and back, skip, back, skip, back, skip, back.
great way to break up the scale so it doesn't become too monotonous and start to just sound like an exercise. Now if it's strumming that you're more interested in and you want to play more rhythm on an acoustic guitar, after you've got some of your first open chords down, you can start to play different patterns over a metronome. So here's a metronome at 80 BPM. I'm going to play a G chord and first of all I'm just going to do a down strum on each beat. Now I'm going to put an up, one, two and three, four, really gentle. Try not to pull too hard. Let's add another one. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. Let's add another one. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, now we're going to make our way to the most popular eighth note strum, and we're going to take out the third down strum. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, just with the metronome. Start to change the chords. Now let's move on to how to learn your first song. I'm going to run you through a song, Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. The first thing I'll do when I'm learning a song is to, believe it or not, just listen to it and pay attention to the structure of the song or what we call the form. You may start to find that you learn songs in somewhat clunky ways and a great way to get over that is to know what's coming up so you can start to link the sections really well. But one thing at a time. So I'll listen to the song and I'll get the sense of the form of the song down. The next thing that you're gonna to want to start to learn is how to read tab. The guitar is somewhat of a complex instrument. Any instrument is for that matter of fact. But we have a system, a written system on the guitar, which is called tab. Now, if it's your first time to guitar, this is a great way to learn how to communicate with other guitarists and start to read songs. So it's not all just from memory and it's not all from ear. Tab is a numbers based system. You'll see that each string has a line each. Now, this is a little bit confusing for the first time you see it. It's not a direct reflection of the guitar. It's upside down to what we hold in our hands. This low E string is actually the lowest line of the tab. And this E, which is furthest down our guitar, is actually the highest line of the tab. The reason is, in music, we talk in terms of pitch, low notes to high notes. And when that's written in music, the pitch goes upwards. Unfortunately, the guitar is structured in a way that the lowest note is highest to the ceiling. We still want to think of this as low. It's a low sound and that's the most important thing. If you read the tab, you'll see that there's a two on your A string and this means you find your second fret and you pick that. You're going to repeat that and then you're going to quickly go two to four, all on the same string. Then up to the fifth fret. Two more picks. And then we have what we call a pull off, which is an articulation that we're going to cover in the next lesson. Pull this off to the fourth. And then a quick slide down again. With a little bit of grit. to do and it actually has nothing to do with the guitar and this is matching your voice 
with what you're playing. Some people are quite embarrassed about singing and I'm not expecting you to be Pavarotti, but I would really recommend you trying to sing your parts. That can give you a bit more guidance than just numbers on a page. Some tab do come with musical rhythmic notation above it, but if you are completely new to music, reading music, then it can be very difficult to understand. So try to sing back your parts so you can get a sense of that rhythmical feel. Otherwise it could be anything. And that's not right, as you know. Once you've got that down, put the song on and play along with it. This is a way that I learned and I had great fun doing this. You almost feel like you're in the band and it's an awesome experience if you don't have people around you directly to play with. So there's your riff and let's move on to the next section which is the verse. So in the verse we have just chords. Those chords are E major open string second fret second fret on the D first fret on the G, open B, open E. Then we're going to go to A7. This is open A string, second fret of the D, open G, second fret of the B, open E. Then we have an E again. Another A7. E, and then we go to B7, 2nd fret, 1st fret, 2nd fret with the ring finger, open string, 2nd fret with the pinky. This is a bit of a tongue twister the first time you do it, B7. We go back to E, and then an A7 again. Now the strum that we're going to do is this. Down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now we move a little quicker, E to B7. One, two, into chorus with our riff. If I have a pedal, I stamp that on, that's my distortion or my gain. Take your time, you don't have to rush. No one's in any hurry. And the best way to build in these habits and finger movements is slowly. In the next piece, we'll be talking about adding to this, creating a bit more flair, soloing, and my journey as a session musician. Also recording at home as well. Thanks again, see you in the next video, can't wait. Do come and join us on the ICMP blog and channel for more content. See you soon. Thank you.